Then I want to quickly touch upon Little Yatty's new album called Let's Start Here, which I've been absolutely banging and enjoying for the past week or so since it dropped. I really, really, really do enjoy this album. I think most of you who know me would know that I'm a big Tame Impala fan. Um, since the first album, to be honest, I've been flipping in love with that band forever. I think, if anything, they probably just reminded me of why I loved MGMT for so long. And because MGMT went on a bit of a hiatus, they kind of had big gaps in their you know, drops. Um, Tame Impala came in and kind of filled that kind of psych prog rock shoegazy type of vibe for me they filled that niche really well and it reminded me a lot of the kind of indie dance stuff that I was into as well back in the day so I've always kind of had an affinity with flipping Tame Impala and sometime last year I'm gonna say if I'm gonna double check my flipping um Apple Music thing Tame Impala did put out a remix EP for uh, let me just double check it here that I remember seeing a remix EP for Slow Rush. Yeah, that's the one. Slow Rush, right? It's a B-side remix EP. And it's really well done. For, 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 for starters, the cover's brilliant. You know, Tame Impala always have flipping deep, deep covers. But it's called Slow Rush B-sides and Remixes, and it came out last year. And there was a track on here called Breathe Deeper, which is a track that, you know, Tame Impala already have on their album. But it was a remix featuring Lil Yachty, and I thought it was incredible incredibly well done little yeah he comes in straight away first verse and kind of holds the entire tune right into the middle until it kind of switches out into the regular um you know um kind of tune and chorus and whatnot and i thought the bop and the beat and how he kind of flowed on the track was awesome and again you have to imagine this is me being exposed to little yeah recently when he's going through his memphis thing and he's kind of jumping onto that wave and putting out great collaborative albums and jumping on people's songs and really trying those interesting things when it comes to rap he was trying to just just having fun doing a good thing and then he's doing this and then of course that was amazing and the next musical thing i seemed legitimately putting out was um poland right um and that was a random little throwaway thing that leaked that kind of became its own little thing and then you're just assuming okay he's just going to put out an album you know cuts full of that kind of similar type of sound and instead he just reverts and goes the complete other, the other way and decides to put out essentially a psych rock album and i legitimately have to commend the guy even if you're not a fan of it i think the bravery it requires to be somebody in his pocket who can clearly churn out a lot of those flipping great bangers and hits that he has in his arsenal and just make that work he decided to go the opposite way or go the complete opposite way and do something completely different and basically you know draw a line on the sand and kind of progress as an artist from there because i would hope so my hope would for little yati would be that he doesn't even try to continue trying to perfect this sound he just changes it again next album i think that'll be pretty sick to see um so he just basically just takes the kind of kanye west approach to it or maybe maybe there is some maybe a refinement that could be done going on like an iteration like similar to what tired the creator kind of does but i feel like if you try to create like sonically and theme wise and tone and sound it just feels different each album there's no way you can kind of tie there are maybe some chords or some strings or some you know the run there's a running through line throughout most of his albums i'm sure you can kind of point out but for the most part you would still say when you hear of a tyler the creator album coming you know and he's working on something it's usually something going to be interesting somebody fresh something i've ever seen before so i love the fact that luya is kind of going in that, that direction as well so hopefully this becomes a thing that C sort of continues on and doesn't see the lack of sales or the lack of coverage as a bad thing because i think again similar to what happened with playboy kai and whole lot of red where a lot of people like myself included didn't really get the album until we saw it live i feel like this album may be the same i think a lot of people who don't like the album once they see him performing it live you know in a festival or something or at his live show somewhere suddenly it'll start to click oh okay this is why he did this this way and why this flipping rocks but i think this is going to work really well personally for me um i think to pick out a couple of tracks that i actually liked that i thought was sick number one i would definitely say running out of time I thought that was absolutely amazing. Personally, for me, I think it's one of my um, standouts. I didn't know Justin Scott because it doesn't have features on it. Okay, on the when you buy it from Apple Map Music, I didn't even know Justin Scott was featured on there. I thought Running Out of Time was really nice, and it kind of reminded me a little bit of the Weekend song, um, which is another one called Time as well. What's the Weekend song called? Um, Running Out of Time by Little Yeah. It kind of reminded me of the Weekend song. Um, let me see if I can get it up on here. The Weekend. Where is he? Boom! 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 Boom, boom, boom. I'll just type it on here. 
weekend. There's a song on there where I think it even features the girl from um uh what's that thing called? From uh what's that Korean TV show? I'm sure she's in the video, right? If I'm not mistaken. Anyway, that's the one, yeah. Um I got it here. Out of time. There's a track on the weekend album called Out of Time that reminds me a lot of Running Out of Time. So it, but it's just ironic that they've got the kind of same sort of title. But I thought that was absolutely banging. There's a track here, if I'm not mistaken, called Track 5. I think that's an interlude, which I'm a really big fan of. I think it's like a spoken word. No, it's not spoken. It's like, it's like a little yeah, ranting about, you know, how the difficulties of being famous and rich and stuff. And there's a re really nice beat or nice kind of tune playing in the background as a bed that's so magical, so euphoric feeling. I would love to just get that looped, you know, even sometimes without the vocals, just playing in the background. It's such a good mood setter. It's such a good mood setter. It reminds me of those type of songs that you play before you're about to do ayahuasca or something to kind of just set the room and prime it. That's what that felt like. I thought that was absolutely banging. Um, What's I like? I've, I've lost vision. I officially lost vision was really nice. And of course, my one of my favorites was the last track, Reach the Sunshine, featuring Daniel Caesar, which I didn't know that she was actually featured on it, but I thought that was absolutely crazy good. Um, so for me, in terms of the 14 tracks, um, there's not many skips on this entirely going forward. I love the fact that there's so many switch ups in between the tracks that kind of throw you off. Um, and kind of add to the whole overall texture of it. And I legitimately can't wait to see him perform this live at some way shape or form but for me i really enjoyed it i really did like it especially coming from a taming parlor fan i didn't think it was like a taming parlor copy or that he was trying to cat it in any kind of way i really did think that he did a good job but clearly the people at pitchfork didn't think he did a good job as you can tell from the review i have here on screen the pitchfork people put it as a 6.0 um, this is courtesy of a person called Alfonso Pierre. Let me see what he actually said about um, the whole album because I actually read this. What did he say? He says as follows. At a, at a surprising listening event last Thursday, Lil Yai introduced his new album, Let's Start Here. An unexpected pivot with a few words every rapper fan will be find familiar. I really wanted to be taken seriously as an artist, not just some SoundCloud rapper or some mumble rapper. This is a speech rappers are obligated to give when it comes time to drum loop to take the backseat to guitars, from rapping to be muted in favour of singing, for the ad-libs to give up to the background of singers and for the brigade of white producers with plaque line walls to be invited into the fold. That's bullshit to be fair rappers do that because journalists or music critics like alfonso and people within the industry in general for some reason they don't treat rap or hip-hop as an art form or they don't hold it up in the same level of um you know respect as other genres it doesn't necessarily get it so i think for whatever reason musically sonically some people get you know get it but other people for the most part they just think they're just gonna rap on flipping fruity loop beats and shit and that's it and it doesn't necessarily get the same respect as somebody constructing an album you know in terms of like an indie album or alternative album so because of that rappers try to force the subject or force the issue by pivoting away and doing things a little bit more experimental, grabbing a guitar, you know, getting into dance music or something because they want to take it taken seriously. So because they can't be taken seriously in the art form that they choose or that they're great at, they have to kind of go away outside of it. And usually it doesn't end up going that well, especially if you're going to try and step headlong into a, another genre you have no knowledge of, no interest in, just want to do it as a cash grab also. It probably isn't going to work out well for you. So I think it's a two-pronged attack. As much as it could be annoying for journalists to see rappers and artists do the same, hip-hop people especially, try out the same line because they want to try something different and whatnot i think for the most part industry people will ha also have to blame are also to blame because they don't respect hip-hop as much as other genres it just is what it is um, it continues rap fans including myself don't want to hear it but the reality is that large slices of music and pop culture rapper is thrown around with a salt in the tongue of course pop culture is also powerfully influenced by hip-hop that is until the rappers get close and their hands reach the lapels if anything 25 year old yeah he, he's only 25 you know that's the thing you have to imagine the potential this guy is showing already he's already showed us what he can do in, when he, in his pocket right he's Marcy's pocket I think that's something you have to give something I remember seeing an interview with, with The Weeknd saying the same sort of thing where I think it was when before The Weeknd put out um, Kiss Land I think that might be the one that really started this whole like turn to like Weeknd being like a pop star um, 
I think he said something like, oh, I could make, you know, House of Balloons 10 times over and it'd be a smash, right? That sort of sound that he kind of um, popularized and invented and is kind of known for, like in the streets, right? Like the streets will never forget that whole flipping House of Balloons era, right? It's absolutely amazing. And he said he could do that, you know, in his sleep 10 times over. But he said the hardest part is actually making a pop record, like going and working with somebody that's worked with Justin Bieber and stuff as a writer. I forgot his name, Max Martins or something, whoever that guy is and trying to construct a hit record that regular folks and their normies will actually gravitate to and not just people who are you know all serially online as much as i am and stuff and i really respected it even though kissland wasn't maybe overall one of his best projects i felt like that bravery to try something different in the cusp of you actually perfecting your sound and being known for it or you just double down and keep doing it was really brave and the fact that we've seen already from little yayi in these you know, over, I won't say short career, but so far we've seen him be able to do, maybe it's been 10 years, isn't it, so far in the industry? It might be 10 years, because I think he might pop out when he's 18. But in general, we've seen so much from him already, and he's only 25 years old. Just imagine how much more he's going to progress going forward. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Young Lean, of how much potential these guys have. I think Young Lean maybe is the same age range. I think he might be 26 or something as well. So these guys have so much potential going forward. So I don't think... um even if you're not a fan of this iteration of what he's doing, just imagine a few more sessions under his belt, a few more albums with a similar sort of sound, evolving it, harnessing it and whatnot. So evolving, um, you know, correcting it along the way. I think it's going to work. Um, anyway, continues here. As one of the few rappers of his generation able to walk through the front door anywhere because he's typically gushes sweet sound and innocent youthful bearded braid look might be the wrong messenger. What's sour about Lil Yachty's statement isn't the idea that he wants to be taken seriously as an artist, but the question of who he wants to be taken seriously by. But come on, man. You don't want to just appeal to one small base of people. You want your art to touch as many people as possible. Art should be genderless. Art should be should have no race or whatnot. But we know what it is in the real world. We know how people are. If you keep making a certain type of record, people are only going to look at you a certain type of way. So as an artist, you do owe it yourself, especially if you have aspirations to do other things before you leave this earth. Let's try and do a thing where we can touch more people and get playing on these stages that I've always dreamed of playing on why not what's 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 bad about that what's bad about watching a performance of Red Hot Chili Peppers playing a flipping glass or something and thinking hey one day I would love to be on stage like that's having people sing along to my flipping indie rock you know flipping anthem that I put together one day that's not a bad thing especially if you're a rapper to pivot away from that I think that's okay anyway it continues here when Yaddy first got on, a certain corner of the rap fandom saw this marble-mouthed enunciation and unwillingness to drool over hip-hop history as symbols of what was ruining the genre. And few artists more beholden to tradition than Finger Wagon, Pete Rock and Joe Bundan, Vic Menton, Anderson Pack, subliminals of Kendrick Lamar and Cole. But that was years ago. By now, they've found new targets. These days, Yaddy is respected just fine with Ruin Rap. Um, if you weren't, his year-long rebirth of the Michigan rap scene, which has resulted in a good not great michigan boy boy so this guy's not happy with anything he's not happy with the michigan stuff he's not happy with the flipping um indie rock stuff or the psych rock stuff so why are you what do you want from from the yay anyway it continues um so the michigan uh, sorry michigan boy boat would have been viewed solely as a cynical attempt to boost his rap bona fides his immersion there felt earnest though like he was proving to himself that he could do that he could hang so what's not earnest about this, what he's doing? I don't understand this. The respect Yaki is chasing on Let's Start Here feels institutional. It's, it's for the voting committees, for the suits, for the quest loves to shout him out as a future, for Ebo to invite him back to the radio show and say, my bad, you're dope. Never mind if you thought Lil Yatty was dope to start with. The goal of the album is to beyond all expectation and rules of rappers. If I was Lil Yatty, the amount of clout that he has, number one, I wouldn't be giving a fuck what Ebro thinks. Number two, a shout out from Questlove in 2022. So in 2023, doesn't mean as much as it maybe did in the past. This idea that he's kind of doing it for that is absolutely insane. I just think it's purely an artistry thing and wanting to push the envelope and see how far you can get and what you can put out there. I'd imagine him sitting down with somebody like a Drake as well. Yeah, they've become really close friends over the last few years it felt like I'm sure that probably helped it as well the fact that Drake went out and risked you know his reputation in rap by essentially making a flipping deep house tech house atmosphere you know what's it, what's it called atmospheric um, flipping house album and that not really working too well with most of his core audience but the fact that he did it was brave enough 
and maybe someone like a little yeti looking at someone like that thinking right you're the biggest star out and he's probably heard stuff that we haven't heard before unreleased stuff thinking hey this guy could just make wu-tang forever you know 10 times over in an album and you'd be happy with it if you wanted to but he purposely doesn't and he purposely kind of tries to test himself and push the envelope and tries new and fresh sounds and kind of takes it forward there i'd imagine that would influence it also i don't think he cares about those guys personally anyway it continues here the big pivot is highly manicured and expensive blend of taming parlor style psych rock a24 um, synth pop and loungy R&B and Silk Sonic S Funk. Nah, don't disrespect it. This album is far better than Silk Sonic's album. That Silk Sonic album or EP came and went. That first single they dropped was absolutely banging. You thought you were gonna get something, you know, on that kind of level, and then the album or the EP really flattered, um, really, really kind of, um, really kind of fell short of the of the kind of expectancy that we had, especially when you consider the talents involved, right? Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars, it was horrible. In my opinion, Let's Start Here is way better than anything Silk Sonic put out as a, as a whole body of work, in my opinion. Anyway, it continues. It sounds so immediately appealing that it doesn't feel experimental at all. In 2020, Yeti's generational peers, Lil Uzi and Playboy Carti released Eternal Take and Whole Lot Red. Albums that pushed forward pre-existing sounds or point of inability showcases that are not only the artist raps, but their conceptual vision. Yeti, meanwhile, is working within template that's already well-defined and commercially successful. This is what the monologue is for nah i don't buy it man i think this guy's a hater and doesn't really understand what they're talking about because you don't want michigan rap you don't want him trying to experiment and do something different what do you want then do you want him to to, to be making flipping minnesota like you know until he's flipping you know got grays in his hair and stuff like let the guy experiment and try new things personally i like it i think if you are a fan of taming parlor and you do love that kind of psych rock vibe and you are a long time fans of something like an mgmt who i'm obviously super obsessed with and even stuff like slow dive and my bloody valentine and whatnot you'll definitely like this approach to it it's a fresh way it's a cool way um it's a vibe it's a bop i'd imagine doing that on shrooms or mushroom or what acid and lsd and stuff will definitely be a vibe also so i definitely co-sign it for whatever my co-sign is worth i definitely co-sign